Welcome to the Horror Unmasked podcast, where we unmask the monsters and, and explore, explore the lore. lore. I'm Amber. And I'm Lily. And today we will be dissecting it. Let's float. You'll float too. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a rainy day in the late 80s in a small town called Derry, maine a little boy named georgie builds a boat with his brother bill who claims he's too sick to go and play in the rain while georgie plays with the boat outside it ends up falling down a storm drain desperate to get his boat back georgie encounters pennywise the dancing clown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker over here sound like Goofy. What the fuck? <laughs> I realized that once I did it. <laughs> <laughs> is that not what he do? What does he do? He does a little chuckle like that. Yeah, very similar. It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, what is that? I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, do you want your boat pack? Oh, yeah. Who lures Georgie in... And kills him in honestly the derpiest way possible. I'm sorry. But there are some phases that <laughs> no, Pennywise has true. that are terrifying. And yeah. some that just look stupid. It's true. It's true. Summer has started. But feeling responsible for Georgie's disappearance, Bill is determined to find out what happened to Georgie and uncover the truth about the many other kids that have gone missing. Getting his friends, Eddie... Richie and Stanley to help. Who are so fucking funny, by the way. <laughs> They're great. The whole All storm- their interactions are great. Yeah, the whole like, uh... oh, we're about to get there. Mm-hmm. Bill and his friends look in the sewers, which is the funny part where like Eddie's talking about staph infections yeah. and other things. Where the boat might have ended up, but ultimately find nothing. Except for a boy named Ben getting tormented by a group of bullies. While trying to buy supplies to tend to Ben's wounds, which were actually fucking crazy. Like, Bowers yeah. was carving into him. Bowers was a fucking psycho before he eventually... Oh, yeah. In this movie. Yeah. yeah. Way, he, way before that point. Mm-hmm. The group runs into a girl named Bev, who helps them steal the supplies and patch Ben up. A little while later, the group helps another kid named Mike, who is also being harassed by the same bullies. Crazy. Yeah. Knowing that they are all outcasts, the group comes together and name themselves the Losers. Yep, yep, yep. As the group continues to search for Georgie, they all realize that each person has had different horrifying encounters with Pennywise, who they also refer to as It and connect the disappearances of the children in the town to this entity. Spoiler warning. Skip ahead. The losers rely on Ben, who has done much research about the history of Derry, who tells them that this entity only resurfaces every 27 years to feed and get stronger. The losers decide to find its lair and head to the entrance, located inside of a creepy abandoned house. When the losers get inside, they're all attacked by it, but Bev manages to stab him in the head. The losers flee from the house to figure out another plan, but later, Bev is taken by it, and the group decides to go rescue her. No plan, just no plan. Going in, just going in, because it's that. That's their only girl. <laughs> that's it, that is literally their only girl. Their only girl. They gotta protect her. Uh huh. This time, the losers make it past the entrance, with a long trek to its lair. When they finally make it. They find Bev floating in the air while in a trance, staring at the entity called the Deadlights. When trying to get her down, Pennywise appears and begins to attack, not before he does the silly, silly little dance. effing dance <laughs> that is 100% the meme. Yep. 
Mm -hmm. You've seen it. Oh, yeah. The entire group realizes that the less afraid they are, the less power it has and begins to ridicule the clown until he is frail and weak and slinks further into his lair, disappearing. The losers make a blood pact to return to Derry in 27 years, if it ever comes back. The end. Like a literal blood pact. Like, <clears throat> like a literal, they make a, it's a literal fucking blood pact. They stand in a circle, <laughs> hand to hand, blood pact. <laughs> that motherfuckers were not joking. They took the same rock, which I'm surprised Eddie didn't freak out over like what blood viruses you For could get. For a second get. there, I thought it was like a piece of glass. I thought was it was a piece it? of glass. Was it a piece of glass? I think it was a piece of glass it that they either, were found on the ground. It was a piece of glass or a, piece, or a rock. Something whichever. like that. Yeah. Something that was And they sharp. like cut their hands super deep super and then they deep. hold hands in this circle and decide that they'll, that whatever they're doing, they're going to come yeah. out. That was a, that was a occult yeah. ritualistic blood pack that they bound themselves together with. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. So this movie was released September 8th, 2017. Mm-hmm. The director is Andres Muchietti. Sure. Muchietti. I like Mushi. <laughs> Muchietti. Muchietti. Andres Muchietti. Directed. This, that sounds right. Uh, dist- uh, yeah. Distributed by Warner Bros. and Warner Bros. Picture. Now, I have their box office. What was their budget? Their budget yeah. was $79 million. Yo. Because their box office was crazy. Fucking insane at 701.8 million. I think this is the highest Highest. box office we have had. Yes. That is fucking insane. Yeah, because when we went from like doing Saw and their measly like. Yeah. 60 million. Yeah. I mean, even The Shining. Yeah. This was like I looked at this and I was gasped like, what the fuck? out loud. <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you have some nice information, and then our thicky ass cast of characters. Yeah. So this movie is two hours and fifteen minutes long. Long, long. Not as long Not as the long next as one. Not as long as the next one, but still <laughs> but long. But still long. And <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes, good old sixty nine percent, which feels a little <laughs> low. Yeah. Not I, bad, I but it feels a little low. Yeah. I think it is. I think this should sit in the high 70s. At yeah. Least. I think like 76. Sounds... Yeah. Feels right. Mm-hmm. You know? Wasn't Even perfect, 78. but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then our super, super, super long cast list. Yeah. So we have Bill Skarsgård yeah. as Pennywise, Jaden Martell as Bill. The lovely Finn Wolfhard as Richie, Jack Dylan Grazer as Eddie, Jeremy Ray Taylor as Ben, Wyatt Olaf as Stanley, Sophia Lillis as Bev, Chosen Jacobs as Mike, Jackson Robert Scott as Georgie, and then I also have Nicholas Hamilton as Henry Bowers. Yeah, that's who I had as well. Yeah. So, Big old group. Our our main cast of characters that were the most uh, affected. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are in the next movie, too, but I don't repeat them because you heard it here. (laughs) Because then you have to talk about all of them being adults. So it doubles in size. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Whereas I think I I think I have them, but that's just more for like so that I have it on there. Yeah. Um, And obviously we didn't get into it in the little thingy, but like so Henry Bowers is the bully mm-hmm. that they constantly interact with. Yeah. And this motherfucker is a psycho before he snaps later in the movie. No, he actually is. Like, the way he bullies people is actually it's just torture. Yeah. He literally starts to carve his name into Ben's stomach. Yeah. Fucking full knifing it. Mm-hmm. While his friends are like, yo, dude. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm going to, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, you know, like clearly, like you're he, genuinely afraid for his life, for real. Like clearly, obviously, this kid. So he's the son of the police chief, or yes. just yeah. yeah, the son of the police chief. So obviously, he's having some severe abuse going on that's happening at home. Mm-hmm. But that still doesn't excuse the response. But Not I know that oftentimes bullies tend to be the result of bad shit going on at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that doesn't help when Pennywise decides to step in and be like, hey, why don't you kill your dad? Yeah. And then that motherfucker just right in the throat, right in the throat, just wink, <laughs> murder that. It man. was one of those like box cutters. So we took it. And then, like, open the box open cutter. The rest, like, literally into, opened it in his, like, so in his throat. put it in and then just opened the box cutter into his neck. Yeah. Fucking intense. Uh-huh. While on the TV screen, it's like, kill him. Kill yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like Pennywise is in his head. Yeah. Yeah. And this man, snappy snaps. Mm-hmm. Full snaps. Mm-hmm. And then goes to attack the losers again. Yeah, goes to attack the losers. Then, um, at the end of the film, gets arrested and put into an insane asylum. Yeah. Which, right. Yeah. Really so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking actually insane. Yeah. Like wild. How crazy that that motherfucker was. Because mm-hmm. he does play a part in the next movie. Yeah. So. Not that I really mentioned that either. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's <laughs> but for context, and that's what we can provide. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. You know what? Yes. I'm gonna mix it up today. I'm going to go. You're going to go? You're going gonna to throw go. everybody off. Um, yeah. You're going to throw everybody off because usually it's me that goes. But yeah. I also have a lot of notes. Yeah. So tough, y'all. Deal with it. You get to hear about the lore before you get to hear about all my shit. Mm-hmm. Haha. It all begins with a god named Gan who was alone in the universe for a very long time. Okay. Yeah. A god named Gan. A god named Gan. God named Gan. God named Gan. So he was alone in the universe, and so this prompted him to create entities known as the Deadlights. Oh. The cosmic force of destruction. Oh yeah, you're actually gonna have you're gonna actually give us context about what the fuck this shit is. Yes. Thank you. And he created the turtle, the cosmic force of creation. Did you just Yes. Did you just say the turtle? Yes. The turtle. Because all I'm thinking about is just, like, turtles that just walk around. Like, is, like, what the fuck? What? Turtle. Okay. I saw what I, it's a turtle. Okay. I like turtles. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm thinking about is just, like, <laughs> this turtles. little turtle is the... I wouldn't say little. Well, I don't know. I We've never seen the turtle. Oh, just... just relax. I'm getting there. So, obviously, because... The deadlights are the cosmic force of destruction, and the turtle is the, the cosmic- toil. <laughs> I heard that. I said it on purpose. The turtle is the cosmic force of creation. So obviously, they're going to be natural enemies. Yes. So the turtle is also known as Maturin, and is one of the twelve guardians of the beams that held up the dark tower, which is, I believe, another one of Stephen King's literally franchises. Yeah, is the dark tower. Yeah that's what it's called yeah so this entity is also known to be very kind very wise and very grandpa like when speaking to humans gotcha he's turtle 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 Uh uh-huh you know in a future campaign i really want to play as a turtle character hardcore do it hell yeah you gotta speak real slow i want to be i want to be a uh turtle monk Thing. I want to be a turtle monk and then just name myself after some painter from at some point so that I'm like off brand Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> be called Vincent. I Yeah. Yeah. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah. My name's Vincent. And I'm a turtle. I'm a turtle boy. <laughs> I call you Vinny. And I and I I, I put like colorful paint across my eyes. Nice. So it's not a tie, but it's like. Mm-hmm. You get it, and I get it. Well, if you play a turtle, then I'm going to play a very quick character. And so while you're speaking really slow, I'm just going to speak fast all the time, and nobody's ever going to really get what I'm saying at any point in time. Yeah. It's yeah. going to get really tiring for me, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm going to speak before my thoughts actually get to my brain. <laughs> you're going to be so blunt. It's going to be fabulous. Really? <laughs> you're like a rabbit person that's just, uh, like, super blunt. Yeah. I'm just like... I would be really blunt. You know? I always sound tired. I just I sound tired. And I'm I would say like, that about you. I'd be like, why do you sound so tired? I'm not tired. But, it's like, you sound tired. how I talk, man. Okay, sure. 
I just kind of, I'm chill. All right, I'm bored now. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically <laughs> on you to the next thing. You know the old proverb. Nope. Okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> I still win that race, bitch. (laughs) What race? I was on the next thing. (laughs) Was there a race? I was too quick. (laughs) I won already. All right. Um, Yeah. So in the book, it told Bill that Matern was dead. And basically told Bill that it had choked to death on a galaxy. The fuck? <laughs> so <laughs> the cosmic turtle of, of creation and, and choked to death on, on a, a galaxy. On a galaxy? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's how it died, I guess. Well not it, but Maturin. <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Because it's referenced in the book like that. So that's how it's referenced in the book. Not okay. That's how Maturin's referenced in the book. You can't use the word it as a reference because it. it is its name. Yeah. But there are... You can say Pennywise. I'll say Pennywise. Yeah. So if I say it... It is no longer the nondescript terminology. We'll just use Pennywise. Correct. If we use it, then that's with intent. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, there are many references to Maturin, like, in the movie itself. So... Huh. Yeah, when Bev has her school books, there's a little turtle sticker... Oh. on the side and then when bill goes into georgie's room like after he's died and is just kind of like reminiscing yeah there's a little lego turtle in there oh yeah 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 i remember yeah. that so and then also while swimming in the quarry the group is swimming in the quarry uh they there i guess there's a line where they like try to look for a turtle in the water mm. so lots of turtles yeah lots of turtles yeah um so now on to it so or Pennywise. Mm-hmm. So Pennywise is a shape-shifting creature, obviously. Yes. Known as, also known as Glamour. And is, Glamour? Yeah. Is it is its other name? Yeah. It has many names. Huh. So it, it was, it's 20 billion years old. Yeah. Glamour also makes sense just because of its, the shape-shifting nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 20 billion, 20 billion years old. And obviously since they were both created by the god named Gan, Matern is also 20 billion years old. Yeah. So, and they originate from the dimension called the Macroverse. Mm. So that's pretty cool. So it uh, Pennywise's true form on Earth is actually a female spider type. Huh. But that's yeah, the, it, yeah. It doesn't really like look like that, but that's the only thing that the human mind can understand it as. Yeah, it's kind of. Am I thinking because the the what we get is kind of crabby, spidery, visible, yeah, mm-hmm. like. And I was shocked to hear you say female. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. Because there's no like, obviously there's no discernible there's no, yeah. gender, but it's also but it like mainly plays male. Yeah, type. Yeah, but it's interesting to find yeah. out that Pennywise is actually a woman. Mm-hmm. Ha ha ha! It's just because men are scarier. <laughs> <laughs> That pause was palpable for a second there. Damn. <laughs> I said it and I literally went. Ooh. <laughs> At least male male clowns maybe are scarier than female clowns. That's because of John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who I'm not talking about the influences this one, but I am talking about the influences in it chapter two podcast episode. Yeah, yeah. and he is definitely one of them. Oh, facts so, guaranteed. Um, yeah. So Pennywise, also known as Glamour, also known as Deadlights, also known as whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it arrived on Earth in a cataclysmic event similar to an asteroid impact. Yeah. So it went. Which is what we saw, kind of, that crater thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and once people settled over its location, which was in the 1700s, Mm -hmm. that's when it began its 27-year hibernation pattern. Gotcha. So, So was it, like, dormant? And then it just, and then people moved on to the land. Mm -hmm. And that kind of was, like, smelling food, essentially. Yeah, basically. Gotcha. So, um... 
Yeah. Which is interesting. I guess maybe the natives of the land didn't trigger it as much comparatively as yeah. like the permanent permanent settlers. I mean, because the permanent set because the tribes usually they shift around look they they're nomadic and tra- travel locations. Yeah, the first people that it came in contact with were natives. Yes, it's just which we that do get part into of America in didn't movie. get settled by you know colonists until a yeah. little late because expansion and stuff. But. Yeah, but also just we get a little bit of the natives in the second movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. It's just because I'm assuming because of the nature of their nomadic style, it he, it Pennywise didn't really have anything the chance to stay to, there. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it ended up being once settlers came in yeah, and actually yeah. stayed once there. Once people settled over the location. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. That's when it began the pattern. And so it would come out to feed on scared children. Yeah. But never finishes his flesh meals. So the meat is the imagination the food he eats yeah yeah and the salt so like the flavor is the fear gotcha that comes from the kids gotcha gotcha so his seasoning is his seasoning of choice is fear Mm -hmm. and the food is basically the kids like their minds their minds so when you become a victim it sends your minds into the dead light where you float forever and you go insane as it feeds on you. Yeah. So you're never actually truly dead. Dead. You're kind of like in a coma. Correct. So all of the kids that were floating at the end there were all, all just in, in comas? Kind of. I it, mean, it felt weird because the way that they, at least visually... At least this is all the information from more like book-wise. Yeah, because but, in the movie, like, that motherfucker's arm was bitten off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel I mean, like you'd be dead out of that. Like the body, regardless of what coma state, you'd be dead. Well, blood loss is legit. People get their arms bit off by sharks and they're fine. Well, yeah, but they get to the fucking hospital fast. They're not just like walking around with like fucking arm bitten <laughs> off, just fucking walking around being like, I'm fine. No, they get sent to the emergency room and then patched up immediately and given blood transfusions. There's a big difference. Georgie's not over there walking around with no arm being like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm still alive somehow. No, nah, that true. motherfucker would be dead. It's true. I think it's also like these people are dead, but also he still never finished eating them. So they are just kind of floating there. And I yeah. think that in some way his entity does have a hold of their mind. So maybe because the body is not what he feeds on. Yeah. So the body is just kind of like a casing mm-hmm. that. And yeah, he eats them sometimes but sometimes that's, that's yeah. not really yeah what he's feeding on. it's like georgie's arm got bitten off but that's not that like incre- his form that just of increased georgie's fear. fear yeah that just salted his mind more. yeah so it's less of it's like it's like you're it's like a it's like string cheese it's like you open mm-hmm. the package and that what you want is on the inside and that's yep. kind of what that is mm-hmm. i just associated those kids with string cheese but yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> delicious delicious so it also goes into like no matter how gruesome a like a murder or a series of murders would be it has such a strong influence that it prevents anyone from really wanting to investigate too deeply which because is because of how horrific they are yeah and that might also be because of and we'll get into it i guess into the second movie a little bit more about like the mind state of dairy in association with it Mm -hmm. versus leaving the area yeah so it might have more to do with his influence on the location Mm -hmm. which is part of the reason why they don't yeah exactly yeah for sure um because i'm like i'm sorry if there's a bunch of murders of children people are gonna look into that people are but because he lives there and he has such a um impact on the state of people's minds yeah no yeah they just don't really care to look too closely it's kind of like a it's like an i know i should do this but there's something telling me that i shouldn't so i'm not yeah. going to yeah exactly. i don't know why but i'm not going to and i think if you grow up and like stay and live in that area it definitely affects you negatively yeah like that's why all of these kids like grew up with such abusive parents and, and such weird households and weird households yeah. and parents that didn't really care or didn't really show affection or hyper weird yeah, or they're just really extra weird. Like, 
Like, Bev's dad is creepy as fuck. Oh, Bev's dad is creepy as fuck. Oh, Eddie's the fact mom that clearly, is way too like overprotective, overprotective in a, like a dangerous in, way. In a dangerous way. Um, Bill's parents were kind of like standoffish when the whole thing went down. Like I think when I first yeah, started we barely reading, really interacted with his family. When I started reading the book, I think it said something about his mom like being a musician, and that's like all she did and did not give a shit about anything else. Yeah, and I mean even um, Mike's family. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a difference there a little bit I mean, because they're farmers, kind of so died like in a fire. Well, yeah, and then his his family is like farmers, so their mm-hmm. mentality towards death is very different. Yeah, so it's understandable their mentality, and technically they're kind of on the outskirts of the town, so maybe the influence isn't as intense, yeah. but still. Also, Stanley's dad is really shitty because he, when he's um yeah at his what is it his, was it his bat bat mitzvah uh, bat mitzvah yeah it yeah was. he was like giving a speech and his dad was just like totally being an asshole. Well, yeah, because he was, he realized that he was like, fuck it and fuck this Mm -hmm. and dipped. But that's also like, yeah. Yeah. It's unrealistic. It's expectations that are placed on people that shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, a lot of parents, unfortunately, put a lot of high expectations on children and that are not helpful. Mm -hmm. Like in any sense of the word. Yeah. But yeah, so that's the lore on... It, Pennywise, Mm -hmm. Glamour, whatever other name he has. Yeah. And now I'm going to go into some of the stuff I talked about last week with how... Oh, the Shining stuff? The Shining stuff. Yeah. It's not a whole lot and it's not... It doesn't really explain how they really shine, but it's just like characteristics that come through that kind of help the group overall yeah it's 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 still a theory so it is a theory so people say that richie his humor is part of his shine yeah and how he helps the the losers see the comedic comedic side of things which helps them avoid the scary parts of yeah pennywise or dilute them or dilute them so that they feel more brave i think that's really yeah i can get that Mm -hmm. um for mike it's he has a lot of knowledge about the town and its history um and i guess has the ability to connect with like you get you get it more in the second one but he connects more with like the native american people and is able to you know go through that experience because that whole like yeah Again, it's more second movie, but there's a whole experience that he goes through with the natives that where he they show him everything that happened to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So that's for him. For Ben, it's his creativity. Yeah. um, And how he helps the group think and strategize. Yeah. Different ways to defeat it. Mm -hmm. Bev can apparently sense danger. She's yeah quick quicker than most of the guys when it comes to sensing, which is kind of, which is kind of classical of of many of many girls. Like yeah. I get that. Like I mm-hmm. totally, but I also see it as maybe a built in defense mechanism against her father. Her father, yeah, for sure. Like so, so it's like her shine helps her twofold. It kind of mm-hmm. it benefits, and I feel like she gets a secondary shine. Or at least a secondary growth of her shine. Because of the deadlights. Because of the deadlights. Yeah. So when Bev gets captured and is looking into the deadlights, that kind of, they explain it in the second movie a little bit where she basically because she got the shine. No, because she looked into the deadlights, she got like a psychic ability that mm-hmm. helps her with something in the second movie. Yeah. She um. very premonition y. Mm-hmm. I mean, even at the end of the first movie, yeah. she mentions seeing things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mentions the fact that she saw. I don't know if she actually said that she saw them dead. She says that in the second movie. But in the first one, I know that she said she saw something. I think so. Yeah. So I know that she said that she saw. Oh, in the, in the first movie, she said that she saw them coming back. Mm hmm as adults yeah so clearly she's already yeah she did say that she did say that i remember that yeah she has some level Mm -hmm. of the start of that premonition side where she knows like okay we are coming back here Mm -hmm. and we will come back here as adults yeah yeah 
So, for sure. Because I think that's also what spurs on yeah. them doing the pact. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that Bev and Bill are the people with like the most shine, which I, I, would I get. Agree. I get. I would that. agree. Um, for Stanley, it's um, he doesn't really show a whole lot that he does have shine, but uh, it's very obvious in the second movie when, um, you know, we're gonna talk about we'll it. We'll talk so about it's it. It's a spoiler. Um, I I would I would save that. There's I, something that happens that he does, and it basically just proves that he knew what was going to happen. And he, he knew that knew. he had to do something in order to make it so that they would make it through. Yeah. And he was proven correct. It's true. By making the choice that he made. Yeah. Um, But I mean, also in the first movie, I don't know, his character felt kind of like on the side. It's true. And then he was the reason that they kind of like, it was him and Bill, didn't they get into a fight? No. No. It, it was, was Richie. Richie. It was Richie. Richie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Stanley was just very afraid of everything. So yeah. So I think he understood the extent of... He understood his, his role. Yeah. And he was like, okay. Because even and in the second kind of movie, where his there was that through. moment of like... um, Definitely the moment of, uh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I promised. Yeah. Is a powerful... That yeah. scene is a pretty powerful scene mm-hmm. of him being like, I'm sorry, I, I promised. Yeah. Like, I promised Bill I'll, uh, and I'll help. But it's a different kind of help that I don't, that none of them realize that they required. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, then there's Eddie. And for him, it's like his overprotectiveness. Yeah. With the group. Because obviously that helps them, you know, be cautious while yeah. also still being brave yeah and despite his like hypochondria and yeah. his anxieties to literally everything yeah he still overcomes that because yeah. of the group and then obviously we have bill who is basically the leader and empowers everyone to defeat yeah pennywise and yeah is very intuitive about pennywise like is able to discern what is reality and what is just a pennywise um, yeah vision he, it's he can see through the veil of yeah. it more than anybody else can. correct yeah because uh-huh. that comes in significantly stronger in the second movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but the whole thing is like they wouldn't be able to defeat it if they didn't all have the shine yeah uh, it just kind of uh um fately worked out that they all came together Mm -hmm. and that also like being a group made them Mm -hmm. have a stronger shine yeah so if it were any because all of them worked together yeah they all worked together which made them all shine together yeah i mean even if maybe they didn't even have the shine before and it just kind of developed developed as they became a group and got stronger which we can also talk a little bit more in the next one because i also have some things to say about this as their adults and like the theories about them leaving and coming back together yeah other things like that but i think that'll be cool yeah so that's what i had that's what you got Mm -hmm. okay so now it's my turn drop some knowledge throwing fucking everybody on their on their head uh (laughs) okay so i've got a couple things Obviously, a lot of this is the special effectsy stuff. Mm-hmm. So I have my first topic is the face of terror. Pennywise himself as a char- as the character. Yeah. So obviously he has a frightening clown appearance for the most part. For the most part, <laughs> which involves among other things a pronounced forehead, and significant amount of caked on white makeup. Yeah. Yeah. So this design came from several concept artists on the film and the director himself. The prosthetic makeup designer, Tom Woodruff Jr.'s Amalgamated Dynamics, which is his team, formed part of the design for it. So with fellow prosthetic makeup designers, Sean Sansom and Shane Zander, handling application on set. Wait, was set. it Sean and Shane? Yeah. Oh, God. Sean Sansom and Shane Zander. <laughs> That's evil. Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, and this actually took place in Toronto, which is interesting. Yeah. Why wouldn't they just 
do it in the state that that it's a, the movie's associated in. But whatever. I don't know. So it's done in Toronto, and then the costume designer Janie Bryant looked after the characters Harley Quinn like garb. So for Pennywise's face, it was a relatively straightforward foam latex application makeup mm -hmm. that they created. Um, to them, it was all about a combination of form, this much larger head that gave the character this weird feeling, almost like a childlike kind of look. A larger head, a smaller face. Mm. And in that in itself, it was very creepy. Yeah. Um, the clown makeup consists consisted of a set of prosthetic applications that had cracked skin applied. So the process took over three hours of application time to be put on. Because obviously it was more than just clown grease paint that was being wiped off. It was actually as if part of his skin was also becoming decrepit. And it gave him this kind of hellish appearance. So all of the cracks and everything. Like it was makeup but it was also his skin yeah it wasn't just like two layers of something so the pennywise face it has all these wrinkles and cracks and stuff like that and that's actually just his actual skin so pennywise steps out of a refrigerator at one point <laughs> and untwists his body yeah he do so they used uh the actor and he did all the actions huh yeah. Then they figured out whether they figured out where his head should be and they replaced his body completely so that he could be a contortionist. Uh huh. Yeah. And that was um, achieved by Nicholas Brooks, the visual effects supervisor and everything. So Pennywise's mouth was also designed directly by Muschietti. Ah, yes. I'm going to just call him Mushy. <laughs> Mushietti <laughs> to form an extended smile that almost becomes vertical on the outer edges of the lips. Yeah. Which definitely... Uh, oh, That's ugh. unsettling. Really creepy. Because, God, the faces that he... The smiles that he pulls is excruciatingly uncomfortable to look at. So... I especially hate... Yeah. When he when his eyes go weird and he yeah. starts drooling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's how you know that he's he's hungry. Oh yeah. And obviously with clown tradition, their characters clowns usually have big old red noses, but they have a very faint red nose on Pennywise. So he still has this clown appearance, but it's very it's more subtle. And then Yeah, where's like the the original version of it, he's got a big old He's honker. got a big old, like, straight up clown nose. Like, it's literally like, beep, beep. Yeah, yeah. And then Andy also had them do a couple of different versions of teeth for him. Mm -hmm. Which was a kind of, which they were saying was kind of fun. As they had one that they called the bunny teeth. Where you looked at a clown's, you look at a clown's face and you see these large incisors uh, yeah. and you feel like it's this cartoonish rabbit kind of thing. Not really overt, but more psychological. And it shifts your perspective suddenly for something that's cute and cuddly to something that is creepy as hell yep. and deadly. Yep. And then I'll go into some of this stuff, which is so... <clears throat> More less about the makeup, more about some other aspects of it. So, also, I don't know. I don't know if I have it here, but I'll I'll, I'll say it later if I don't. Um, so, in the show, in a showdown with the kids that he'd been tormenting, our group of the losers, mm -hmm. he transforms into an even more grotesque alien form with horrifying tendrils and tentacles. Yep. This aspect of the creature work was ultimately handled digitally with visual effects supervisor Nicholas Brooks helping uh, Muschietti plan out the fight between the kids and the creature. So rather than doing a storyboard creature sequence 
Instead, they actually choreographed an action sequence. So they choreographed the fight, motion captured it, and then they did a development early before shooting that was based on the actual choreographed fight. Mm. So instead of it being planned out in a storyboard format, it was like an actual sequence that they had made. Um, and then Rodeo FX contributed uh, previews for these uh, creature scenes and later much of the final CG creature work. Other VFX vendors on the film included uh, Cubica, Hollywood FX, Atomic Arts, Make FX, Savage, Soho, and an in house team. So. That's a lot. Of they groups. had a lot of a lot of people. So Brooks also rehearsed scenes with Skarsgar and the chil- the children actors carrying foam weapons. Yeah. Beating the shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they had lots of fun with that. Yeah. Um, so during the shoot. The different forms that Pennywise shape shifts into were usually represented by something practical on set. A performer in a costume or makeup or Skarsgar himself. So Rodeo FX under visual effects supervisor Arnaud Brisbois. Hopefully I'm not butchering that that bad. Uh, then delivered CG creature augmentations and transformations that range from jaw and maw work mm-hmm. dubbed the kill mouth <laughs> Uh, to Pennywise's twisted and contorted body. And some usually takes on what might normally be considered creature effects. And then since Pennywise has got a head like a balloon and a clown mask on, it's almost wasn't like doing a creature per se. Because normal skin, their skin doesn't have to be like tissue. So... It could be rubber or silk or costume. Mm-hmm. So he he's caked in makeup so you don't see the jaw muscles twitching before the transformation. Mm-hmm. It was it made him feel more cartoony. So instead of having this more realistic movements of a human face, it was this, you know, otherworldly kind of visual to it. And then The design of it started with Andy and it was enormous fun to work on because it wasn't tied to physical anatomy or evolution of all the things that usually govern most of the works that they would do. It was meant to be unrealistic. It was rendered photo real, however, and it and it looks like it's there, but Its movements and motions and ideas are a lot more fun than the relatively than reality normally gives you. Mm -hmm. So it he's this real creature that has this very like he jumped off a cartoon screen. And then one scene obviously features the kids trapped in a dank house. (laughs) <laughs> not a dank house, but a dank house. Yeah. Dank is in the not 20 yeah. gross and smelly. Yeah. N- coin, new coin term. We're talking about the old one. Uh, yeah, yeah. And again, it's a refrigerator opens to reveal Pennywise inside with an impossibly contorted form. The final shot was made using a both f- photography of Scarsgar and Rodeo FX's CGI finesse. He steps out and untwists his body. They used the actor and he did the action and then they figured out where everything would go after that so that he could have that visual come to him, as I mentioned before. So this shot in particular and the transformation summed up what he sees as the director's unique approach to realizing the supernatural horror in it. So... They were uh, delivering were these playful versions of transformations as opposed to watching something in detail as it grows. It's done with more comic or almost slapstick ridiculousness. 
And so it has this fun, scary kind of visual to it. And then considering how little CGI is actually in the film. Really? Yeah. There is the bev- bathroom nightmare. Oh, yeah. Which utilizes gallons of practical FX blood. Stephen King really likes his... Uh, his blood? His blood. Mm-hmm. His, like, gushing and splashing. Gushing and blood. And the in-camera tentacles... Like, even with Carrie. filmed. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, blood everywhere. You got the elevator and the oh, yeah. Overlook Hotel. You've got Carrie being dumped by a bucket of blood. Exactly. You've got Bev being exploded in the bathroom. Yeah, and the the tentacles of hair were actually filmed um, in reverse. Oh. So one of the film's best scares in Pennywise leaping out of the projector image also. Yeah. Like a jack-in-the-box. Very mm-hmm. much a practical effect. It was an actual practical effect. Wow. Um, and I saw the images for it and I thought it was kind of fascinating. And thanks to Force Perspective, suddenly appearing gigantic. Mm-hmm. So the image I saw of it was actually, so Scarsgar was actually, like there was a box that was the projector screen essentially. And they had him in it. So he was coming out of it physically. Nice. So there was definitely... They really played with perspective. And I think that's really kind of cool that that's that impressive. is not a CGI, CGI scene. Yeah. But I that's love like legit. When they don't use CGI. Like you can tell that Pennywise is obviously, there's a lot that is CGI. Yeah, but there's also to. not like, what I think is also really cool is the reason why I like, and I think the reason why we like when they don't have as much CGI is because it shows the creativeness that these makers will go to yeah. to get the visual that they want it's and like what it was in the past yeah when you had to come up with like how the fuck am i going to get this scene the, the best example i can come up with is when you're watching jurassic park and you go back and you watch the older ones and mm-hmm. you can see that that is like real puppetry yes and it makes it feel Real. That's a real ass T-Rex. That's a real dinosaur. That's a real ass T-Rex. And that then, is a big baby. And because you, you can see the textures and you can see the actors interacting with things and mm-hmm. it's natural. And then you go and you watch the movies now and you can tell there's a, there's that that CGI. is CGI yeah. because it, there's yeah. just like a fakeness to it. Yeah. And I, yeah. I can't really explain it, but it's like... You, I just love just the know. fact that like in a... Which is heartbreaking because it's some of the images. It's the images that I lost mm. when my phone went to shit were the images of the 30th anniversary tribute store uh. out at there. And I got the and I lost the pictures of me taking it with the Triceratops from the movie. Oh, no. And I'm heartbroken because I love those pictures and I lost them forever. Mm. Because I'm a hardcore Jurassic Park kid. I, when I was little, I my mom told me that when i was in her in my crib i had a dinosaur themed stuff and uh i watched jurassic park to the point where i destroyed my parents tv (laughs) i incredible was a hardcore jurassic park kid and i've always loved those movies Mm -hmm. and it's you know i just i love the fact that like later on in life i learned about like the insane technical shit that went into Jurassic Park and like the laughing technical difficulties of the fact that they had like rain and shit and then they had to like pat down their T-Rex because it just would be leaking water. (laughs) It was just dripping water. (laughs) Like I love that. I love that it was like a real thing that you could interact with. Exactly. And they just don't do that now. And like it takes away from the actors as well because as an actor, it's so much better to have something that's tactical in front of you so that you can really get into that mindset yeah. of emotion that you need to instead of, like, yeah. this guy on stilts in a green suit. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, there's also, I think that I mean, there's it also... to a, their skill, but yeah. it's also just, it's helpful. I think there's a, a level of it where they could have done practical for the more recent Jurassic Park stuff with the dinosaurs. Yeah, for sure. Especially seeing as many videos as there are of people who walk around in like cities and shit in full raptor get up. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Like, yes, they've got the black legs, but that can be digitally Mm -hmm. edited out. I want to see a Transformers. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you couldn't even get through the sentence. <laughs> 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 I want to see a Transformers movie with no CGI. Yo, we're going to get the um Transformers outfits from the fucking when you have the meet and greet out it. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly they all had growth unspurts. Growth they, unspurts. Yep. All <laughs> They're only a couple feet taller than they the people. They all shrink. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like cuz even cuz even referencing the Jurassic Park stuff, it makes me think of like the fact that you can meet Blue and the others. Yeah. Out at Universal and, I and you get that, that kind of yeah, mm-hmm. I do. I do too. I want to do that. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. I didn't like I didn't realize what that was. I thought it was just a silly little like tiny little hand puppet. No, yeah. it's like an actual yeah, thing. Oh yeah. An actual dinosaur coming at you. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, we tangented hard. We did. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, getting back in this. This is about Georgie talking mm. to Pennywise. Mm-hmm. So, that itself was really complicated for the technical challenges. I suppose. So having a six-year-old kid yeah. under the rain yeah. talking into a hole. Okay. They shot part of it on location and part of it on a stage that they built. Yeah. Because <clears throat> it wasn't easy. They had to have the rain all the time. Mm-hmm. So there was a water issue and a sound issue. That makes sense. And the logistics around putting a camera inside the tiny space of the hole where P- Pennywise was. Yeah. Was practically impossible. <laughs> Stephen King is writing some shit. He got some crazy ass stories out there, my dudes. Uh-huh. And I do have. Who knew it. that a little kid going down a, a drain pipe would be so? Yeah, and I do have so the difficult. thing that I was mentioning earlier. I was wondering if I had okay, it or yeah. not. So some people have criticized the fake appearance yes. of Pennywise's eyes. Yes. And yet, Bill Skarsgård has says he can it's move his, his eyes independently eyes. of each other. It is his eyes. So they're all sitting here criticizing. Which, along with the glowing contact lenses, gives him that bizarre look. Yeah. So Skarsgar, yes, this motherfucker, those eyes that Pennywise does are legit. Mm-hmm. Real legit. Yeah. This, this motherfucker and that his I did know. eyes. That I did know. I did know something about that. Yeah. Um, that's just because, you know, when you're just looking at pictures of the actor, like, you can tell that his eyes are Well, you're are, also his eyes are a theater kid, so his eyes are it's a little understandable. Buggy. What? That you're a theater kid, so you would know that That I would know that? Oh, yeah, I guess not everybody would know that. No, no the fuck they would not. <laughs> that's like going into a museum and being like, you know, most people would know that this has been photoshopped. I'm like, no the fuck they wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no the fuck they wouldn't they wouldn't notice this little detail that's a little off because it wasn't edited right no the fuck they wouldn't <laughs> no they would not know that this wasn't color corrected <clears throat> i mean if you're a scar scar fan you should know that but if you're like a movie theater person you should also know that um but if you're a regular everyday person hi hello here's your new information here's you brand new information for you yes um no yeah. we are uh, s- strangely qualified and f- f- and unqualified at the same time. It's true for this. So, take that with what you will. Yes. <laughs> so believe every single word we ever say. We are always telling the truth, and we are never ever wrong. <laughs> Immediately an email. I'm sorry, you were wrong about this fact. <laughs> um, here, let me tell you about this thing that you missed. <laughs> Well, you would have to get through the first five minutes of our of our <laughs> oof, uh, oof, you know, of our podcast to find out for realsies. You have to get into the meat and potatoes. You do not just the intro, not and just the a sauce, little, a little tidbit of the summary, not just the sauce, my dude, not just the sauce. <laughs> deep cut, yeah, deep cut, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was my stuff so what yeah, one good. stars do you have for me i've got a couple long ones here got it all right so this first one wow i honestly can't believe these reviews i made an imdb account just to write a review damn you're already putting in too much effort already i love the original and i've seen it many times i haven't uh, this movie was horrible. I feel insulted by the directors. There's only one. I wasn't scary at all. Oh my god. Any potential scary scene was 
downplayed by jokes so forcefully inserted into the script, there are multiple major holes in the storyline as well. Hole one. We're playing golf. Gotcha. The group of bullies never once said anything about their buddy missing. So when Bowers... No. Like Bowers' friend group, yeah. when that one dude dies yeah. by Pennywise. Yeah. And they're, they never go like, oh, my bud. That's because he's not fucking important. Because he's not fucking important. And also the dude is fucking psychotic so before when we first meet him. He wouldn't question it. He wouldn't give a fuck. It's not his also, priority. Also, this time frame is very short. I doubt they would really... Yeah. Know that he's missing that fast. No. Um. All right. Hole two. The girl is pulled down from floating and brought back to life. Doesn't that mean that the hundreds of kids that come down from floating at the end come back to life too? No, not if... Literally, I just had this conversation about the fact that if you've had your arm bitten off... You're dead. You're dead. Yeah. There is no... Com- like, some of these kids have gotten horrifically maimed. Mm-hmm. They're Like, they may be in a coma state while he's devouring like their in their mind, brain. But, like, their body's dead. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Mm-mm. Especially not after, like, A, you're going through a sewer. B, there's a... There's no way. Without medical attention almost immediately, there's no fucking way you're alive. And then he also asks, or do their rotting corpses fill up the sewers for 27 years? Does mm-hmm. Georgie come back to life too? No. Their no. bodies are just in the fucking sewers. Well, floating. In 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 the sewer. Like in the... In his lair. Like actually in the air. Yeah. And then at the end, they are yeah. obviously descended, but they're also just still mm-hmm. dead bodies. Mm-hmm. Hole three. We're getting, gotcha. we're getting through the pu- the putts. The putt-putt golf? Yes. The girl can't decide which boy she loves. She took the poem from the pudgy kid's room. I have to assume because she randomly ends <laughs> up with it in her bedroom. But then she still thinks that Bill wrote the poem somehow. The pudgy kid kisses her, bringing her back to life. True love brings back the dead girl like Princess and the Frog or something. But she winds up with Bill. Every cheesy humor film jump scene was witnessed in this film. The acting was good, but I can't see how this is touted as a horror film. I felt like I was watching a Disney movie by the end of it. So technically, she didn't actually end up with anybody. She didn't. She just kissed one of them. And also, she didn't take the note from his room. She was given the note, like, secretively. Mm -hmm. She already had it. Yeah. And... The the truth of the matter is is that she thought Bill was it, it, yeah. But he literally doesn't know anything about poetry, and that he, should have been the the clue. that should have been the sign. But also the second fucking sign is that she should have noticed that when Ben fucking said the rest of the line to yeah. her, yeah, should have been her tip off was oh it was this kid, no, but that's fine. My because heart burns there too. Did you not pick? Did up you not on pick that? up on that? Like Bev. Sweetheart. She literally brought you, he literally brought your ass back to life and then you said a line and then she said and then you said the line back and you didn't catch it? No. Whatever. Because she was so ah hard eyes over Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, I kind of hate that the whole thing where it's like, well, then I spoiled the second one kind of. Yeah. Never mind, we'll talk about it later. Um But yeah. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't end up with anybody. She's just None of these are plot holes. They're all just story stuff. Things you didn't understand. <laughs> Literally. That's, Literally. That's not holes. That's okay. Second one. Honestly, I was really excited about this movie. Like, really excited. I watched the original It this morning to get ready for it. And I have some reference. No, and have some reference. And it was absolutely terrible. Seriously, terrible. Not only did I walk out the second Pennywise was shown in the beginning... No, not only did I want to walk out the second Pennywise was shown in the beginning, but the rest was torture. I was with other people, so I couldn't walk out. Here's the thing. This is the first time I've ever been so disappointed with a movie that I went out of my way to write a review about it. The clown was not scary in the slightest. The teeth were stupid. (laughs) I agree with you on that one. The acting was a joke. No, shut up. The kids made a ton of terrible, a ton of terrible and sexual jokes. They were fucking kids in the 80s. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, clearly, either you weren't born in the 80s 
or like born during that time and alive during that time. No, but I'm that sorry, was, that was very accurate. That was very accurate. That's what was happening with as kids having parents and people who have very clearly lived in the 80s. Mm-hmm. That was accurate. Mm-hmm. So it's really crazy now how like sensitive people are about children. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. I'm also really grateful that 90s, 80s, 70s clothes are coming back. Oh fuck yeah, for sure. All of my shit that I bought. <laughs> for sure. I love... 70s and the 90s are, like, peak for me. I love that. I Lots love that shit. Lots of fun stuff. 80s, not so much. I'm 50-50 with the... Uh, 50/50. No. Not... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, yeah. In the 80s, kids were wild. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Now we have a little bit more of a leash on them. Yeah. Yeah. But you know how it was. There's they a reason like... why a generation of children were called latchkey kids. <clears throat> Because they literally just would leave and the house and you would do that. That was it. Yep. Come home it. when the lights turn on. Yeah. That, yeah. Literally. That's not how I lived. I kind of lived like that. No, I lived in, in my house. Well, that was you. I lived, I, I lived, uh, not latchkey, but I had a walkie talkie. It was my earliest cell yeah, phone. That's awesome. My early cell phone before cell phones were, were cell phone was a walkie talkie well for me i just i lived in the middle of nowhere so there was nothing really to do except yeah. wander outside and play with sticks yeah <laughs> which i did whereas i lived in a neighborhood yeah i didn't yeah so yeah it didn't stick to the original movie whatsoever they took the you'll float too a little too seriously with all the people floating in the air i guess um, it just plain sucked. In the original, the kids were innocent and actually dorks, but this was pathetic, the way the kids were talking. And why the hell did we watch them in their underwear? I still keep wondering how the hell this movie is rated above an 8 when it should be a disappointment for anyone who knows what a good movie is. This was so much CGI that it took away from the whole movie. I literally just told you that there's not, there literally was not that much CGI. Like, there was <laughs> a CGI, yes, but not as much as you thought. Yeah. I could keep going, but I think I've made my point. I would I wouldn't waste your time or money. Watch the trailer and that's as good as it gets. Ugh. And I also like, why the fuck are you focusing on them in their underwear? Right. Like it's that wasn't the point. just kids just having fun. That was just that was the before times of kids just having fun and not being judgmental about parents. Yeah. Yeah, we don't live in that time frame anymore. Yeah, because now everybody's worried about over sexualizing things and it's like they are children. And nine and times out of ten there are whiteys. adults that are sexualizing children and i'm and trying to act like they're not yep. and then say really fucked up shit about it yep aka i'm thinking about a very specific video of a very specific mother yeah her like i don't know four-year-old son hmm? was they were at the beach this is how stupid it is they were at the beach mm-hmm. and she had like a four-year-old son he was just at the beach playing yeah and this other mother had her like 11 year old daughter there yeah in a bathing suit, like a like the bikini bathing suit. Yeah, and this other mother was like, "Your child, ne- your daughter needs to cover up because she's showing too much for my son." Blah Dude, blah blah blah. Also, he's four. Mm, not to mention the next thing that she said, oh, which was God. the most fucked up thing, mm. is was when later in life my son rapes your daughter, it's your fault. I do remember that. You remember that now? Now that I say that, you remember it. Yeah. That's repulsive. I'm sorry, but if your son's gonna rape people, that's on you for not training him and Literally, him. The, the way you're handling that situation proves that. Like, the fact that you're complaining about this little girl's bathing suit, you're at the like, fucking beach. Like, she's 11! Beach. She's 11! There's nothing going on. They're at the beach. They're at the beach. What the fuck? He's four. All he cares about is playing in the water, making sandcastles. No, literally. He doesn't know what that is. He just wants to splash around and have a grand old time. You're the fucking one being creepy about it. Yeah. You need to check yourself Mm -hmm. because that's fucking gross. And especially the fact that you are essentially predicting in the future that your son's going to be a rapist. Right. Like that's you commenting on your own parenting. I'm not going to train my child and teach my child enough to not do these things. I'm going to let him just get away with it and blame you for it instead of me and my parenting. That's just which society is the reality as a whole. of it. That's like society. Fucking all, wild. Oh, that's just how they were raised. 
that's bad. Like, yeah, if wh- that's how they were raised, you need to look at the parents and be like, what the fuck were you doing? Mm-hmm. Why are we sexualizing kids? Pedophilia is not a sexual, like, orient. It's not. It's no. 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 Yeah. It's sexualizing children. Disgusting. But it's, but you have to, like, you have to also look about how people are raised. I'm sorry. Yeah. But if you don't raise your kids correctly, mm-hmm. that's on you. And there's, there, like, there's no one else you blame except for yourself. I understand that some people can be mentally broken to some degree, regardless of whether or not they lived in a great household with, like, proper education. Mm-hmm. I understand that that can happen. But, like, come the fuck on. It's, like, people like that that just... Don't make excuses because you are unrealistic and creepy. Like, the whole point is to do the best we can to prevent things like that. Yeah. And that, that does not help. No. That furthers the problem. And just shows that you don't give a shit about educating your own child enough. Yeah. So, yeah. This is why I hope that I have a son one day i i, I want yeah. both i want son and daughter but i yeah. i want to at least have a son because i want to know that i can raise a child like a man to be respectful and of kind women. of just people and people like yes women obviously but people in general just people like yeah. it's possible and i don't understand yeah at this point, mm. it's it's mm. the way people act is it's the ignorance of their of their growing up. Yeah. It's people just being stupid, and I, it's the it's the creepy, God fuck, it's the creepy boy mom generation of people now that are just creepy. Oh, uh, yeah, I've that heard about just this. Creepy. It's weird. It's fucking cr- disgusting and creepy. It's, I'm sorry, but oh. it is. You can be a mother of a son and that's as far as you need to go with it because you guys make it almost on the level of pedophilia the way that you yeah. act about your son mm-hmm. fucking chill out mm-hmm. like and if you don't really that know is your what we're child about, i don't really want to get into that i don't want to get into it you can look it up tiktok is prevalent with with them if you just look up boy mom you'll find all you need to know yeah but yeah no that's and i hate that because it's like boy mom is so nasty but then you hear about like girl dad and you love that well yeah you love girl dad well yeah because 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 the truth of the matter is that girl dad is actually like psychologically stable yeah and very sweet Mm -hmm. and he like understands that like having his nail painted is fine yeah and dressing up like the sweetest things that i can think about which makes me think about a video that i saw recently on uh on twitter Mm -hmm. x yeah um was a video of there was i guess this little girl and she was having a really hard time because she was having a hard day with school and this is like a i would assume probably like middle school kid Mm -hmm. um middle or even elementary maybe like maybe fifth to sixth something like that and i guess she was either dealing with bullies or dealing with like a hard day at school and everything and her her dad came home with like a little thing of flowers and a little stuffy mm. to show that he, you know, he's there and he supports her and he he'll always be there. Yes. And she sees it and then she starts to cry and I'm just like, oh, this dad, yeah. this dad. But I feel like I love that. I just hate the when it gets creepy. I hate that it's girl dads are all sweet, lovey. But then you get to boy moms and it's totally opposite. Why can't it just be like, ah, moms of boys who understand that, you know, it's cool to play with also masculine things <laughs> and to, like, be that other side of. It's not even just that. It's the problem is, is that it's it's not. So so here's the big difference is it's not. I'm saying why can't they just both be like wholesome? Here's the truth of the matter is it's dads who have daughters. Yeah. And, and then boy moms. That's very different than mothers who have sons. Because boy moms are its whole other thing. There are there are very much videos of mothers who have sons who are in the vein of just like raising him right, yeah. doing good, you know, not shying away that if he wants some feminine thing mm-hmm. or feminine toy yeah. or something like that. Like even even dads at, with sons. And like, even I the love mom's playing them. into the son's masculinity. If, yeah. Like he, that's what 
he's into. And I, like, I like seeing gender neutrality. Yeah. Just going with what your kid is attracted to. Exactly. Just, uh, if they're just, uh, they're just, they just enjoy the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love seeing the dads who dress up with their daughters or even their sons in like Elsa yes. outfits. Yeah. Or princess dresses. Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That's my household. We're going to have a grand old time. We're going to all act like children all the time. Hell yeah. With responsibilities, of course. Yes. But it's, but the point is, is it's like the unfortunate nature of the, the, specific boy mom topic is yeah that's is there's a there's a whole other psychological level that's going on there that's not okay yeah we need to fix <clears> that <throat> yeah change your mindsets guys yeah yeah oh, children okay. are to be loved and cared for that is it but and they're also they're not your toys to dress up or make they are not your second chance right of living through life i'm mm-hmm. sorry but that's not like you can't live vicariously through your child like you can kind of but like i'm but sorry not but forcefully like let them do what they want to do and yeah. like support them and you can live vicariously through their accomplishments and support them that way but yeah. you don't need to force them into a box of what you wanted for your life exactly because like the truth of the matter is is if you force your kid with certain per- perspectives that you're forcing on them you are more likely to cause your child to push away from you because you're putting unrealistic expectations and unrealistic views on who they are as a person because of either how they were as a child or what you want them to be. Yeah, just because Um, they came from you does not mean they are you. Exactly. What? They are their own person with their own thoughts and feelings. It's like, think about this. Are you your parent? Hell no. (laughs) Are you your parent? No. You don't have to be your parent. You don't have to be your parent. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like you can be friends with your parents, that's fine. Oh yeah. But that's you don't want to you don't want to ever That's how parents lose children from their lives is by being over pushy mm-hmm. in that direction. It kind of also explains even kind of dipping back into the story in question. Mm-hmm. It even dips back into the different characters and their interactions with their parents yeah they all left town except for mike but mike didn't have any family left but it's also just like the dad with bev Mm -hmm. was super creepy and was basically trying to idolize her into becoming like her mother yeah and uh you know even with the overprotective mother like he had to make his stance and be like you no longer get to control yeah how I live my life. Mm-hmm. So it's, there's definitely those aspects and there's similarities and all of that. <sighs> but yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that concludes the episode today. We kind of had a pretty intense conversation there at the end. We did. We did. <clears throat> but yeah. So obviously our next episode is going to be our it chapter two. So look forward to that. We'll be talking some more fun. Mm hmm. It's going to be a circus. It it will be. Um, So obviously, like, comment, subscribe to all of our stuff. Five star, heart us, everything that you can do would be fantastic. Get us out there. Share with your friends. Share with your friends. Share with your family. Friends, family. Loved ones. Does your cat sit and watch the TV? Go go tell your cat to go tell its friends. Mm -hmm. Put it on for your cat while you're gone. Yeah. Put put it on and have fun and, and go, you know, when you go to work, tell your colleagues. Go for it. Yeah. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you can send us an email at horrorunmasked at gmail.com. Follow us at Instagram and Twitter at Horror Unmasked. Listen to us on Spotify and iTunes at Horror Unmasked Podcast. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Horror Unmasked Podcast. And I think with that. There's only one thing left to ask. Will you fear? Or will you fear not?